everyone. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. Happy New Year's, everybody. In today's late season matchup, we have two teams who have victory on their minds. It's the Browns going up against the Bengals. So for the call of this week's 17 matchup, let's send it out to our broadcast team, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Larry, it's the NFL on EA Sports, and there you get a look at Paul Brown Stadium on the banks of the Ohio River in Cincinnati. Today, the curtain falls on the regular season, and we've got a good one in store between the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gunn. To my left, Charles Davis. And Charles, you focus on this Bengal team entering play. They come in playing some decent football, 5-3 and three in their last eight games. And the offense last week, they had things humming. If you're a defensive player, you may get overshadowed a little bit, but you're really buoyed by what your offense is doing. Meanwhile, for the Browns here, they have certainly got it rolling of late. Winners of six in a row. And it's simple. The more you win in the regular season, the more likely you play at home in the postseason, and that can take you deep into January. Here we go. The final week of the NFL season. Week 17 is underway. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And a glance here at the man calling the plays under center. Their 6'4 quarterback. First down. But the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. That one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down on the sack. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> across the 20 to the 24-yard line. Eight yards on the run there, and that trims it to a third and 11 coming up. Little trouble thus far on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 11. Hurry up, here we go. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Good defense holds him to only a yard, and it'll be fourth down. Pardon, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. The Bengals bring out their punter now. He'll kick it away after a three and out on the opening drive of the game. there to stop it. Hits at the 8, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. And they'll be led out by the guy under center, Charles, their quarterback. Attack here. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And if this offense is going to flow today, certainly the running back will be a key piece. Without a doubt, because they asked their runner to not just do that, but to block, to catch, to help set a tone for their offense. And they still need eight yards for the first here on second down. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. No surprise there. Jadevian Clyde with a tackle for loss. 
We all know how he became one of the most famous players in football. Oh, that one play. Yeah, that one big time play was on highlights everywhere. They want to see more of that here in the NFL. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. The defensive starters now for Cincinnati. Jadeveon Clowney was the number one pick in the NFL draft, and it was with good reason. An absolute athletic freak. Now he's trying to add consistency to his game. Second down following the run. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Deep drop. He'll rifle this one. This is caught inside the 15. And he takes it all the way down to the three. It's a big play there for the Browns. 53 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. They'll look to throw here. And he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. On any first and goal, the real estate to work with for the offense is really cut down, and the defense knows it. So they often bring heat and pressure, which they did on this play. Got him down for a loss. Not a big one, but any loss of yardage in this position is tough for an offense. They'll look to throw, and he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Browns have taken the early lead. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. After a good punt, this offense will start with tough field position inside the 10. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. That's a really fine play there because anytime you see a comeback route, that means you cannot just stay in one spot and make a play on the ball. You've got to move your feet and move with the receiver, and that's exactly what he did. Second and 10, he'll look to throw again. And he's got some space here. 12 yards there as they move the chains. And they'll run him here. And he'll power his way up near the 25. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. They'll set up a throw. And his throw is incomplete. And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. 
They'll drop the throw. And he comes back with one complete. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. First down coming there on the intermediate passing play. That's been a point of emphasis, they told us in practice, using those medium routes to keep the defense off balance. And it wasn't just them telling us. We got to watch them practice it and work on it because they've been trying to fine-tune it and get it right before this game. And I think they have to be happy with the result. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. And he's got his man on the comebacker. So one quarter in the books on a cold December afternoon. 7-0 is our score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. Back with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and 10. Now back to throw. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. They give him 15 more, and it's another first down. An next teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Back to throw. He's got the hook up here on the comebacker, complete. 18 yards there, and it'll be a first and goal. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. A great play there with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Browns add six to their lead. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the back... the 25-yard line as this offense gets set to take over. They go play action here on first down. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he's brought down, but not before getting across midfield to the 45. Now, that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. Oh, he faked it with a juke. Now he's got some room. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. I need block in the ball. Offense. And that one is going to set the offense back. They'll run it now out of the gun. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. Jadavian Clowney there on the stop. A one-yard gain could look like a disaster, but it all depends on how the game is going. Is it a series of one-yard gains running the ball? If that's the case, you might have to start thinking about throwing it a little bit more. But if it's just the occasional one-yard run, hey, congratulations to the defense. They won that one. 
come back and get him the next time. He'll give it to him right up the gut. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Holding offense. So oftentimes you see defensive holding. Here it's offensive holding for the flag. That'll go as a loss of nine, and it leads to third down. On play action, they'll throw. He's going to loft one deep left side here, and he's unable to grab it. Thought he might have had position, couldn't hold on third down. When teams take shots at the end zone, you've got to defend it the same way you would defend the first down sticks. You defend the goal line exactly the same way. They can't cross that. You play through the receivers. On that play, that's exactly what they did and batted it away. A bullet throw, but incomplete. So here on fourth down, the Browns turn to Travis Coons in the field goal unit. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. And Coons connects on this one. It's good. And they will move up by 10 now, 17 to 7. A little bit of a lower trajectory there on the deep kick, and it worked. Had to do it because he had to drive it out low because of the length of the kick. will head back out there already an excellent field position thanks to the interception now a play fake here on first down surveying the field oh he's got a man wide open complete and he carries this one all the way down to the nine it's a pickup of 33 yards and the Browns are going to have a first and goal Usually hitting a deep post pattern, as we just saw there for a big gainer, that's tough to do because you usually have a safety or two in the middle of the field. But if you hit enough crossers and underneath routes and curls, you start to get those guys creeping up, wanting to make plays on the football. It's the equivalent of a change-up in baseball. You show your other stuff, throw the change-up, and on that play, it worked for big yardage. I know in every game we do, we talk about momentum. That was a momentum play lost. And now, there could be a letdown because they didn't get the interception. Yeah, you could almost hear the collective gasp on the sideline as he could not come up with that football. His throw incomplete. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. Being chased out left. His pass caught at the four. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. And Coons connects on this one. It's good. And that will open the lead. This offense ready to get back out there as they'll have the football to start the third quarter. And to give this time to the tailback. And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. A gain of three, second down. See if they stay on the ground for second down. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. Seven yards remain now on third down. 
Big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop them. Cold, nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you talk about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. And what a big time play there. Got a man and he hits him in stride. A big third down conversion with a gain of 28. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go through a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. So following the run, we'll see what they do here on third down. Looking to throw. Going to throw right side here, complete. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. So he makes the grab and the chains move forward. Nice job by the offensive line giving them time to complete that first down pass. On first down, he'll drop to throw. This will be caught inside the 10. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. And he is picking up right where he left off a week ago. I wrote down so now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And this will be incomplete. I think that's a big time play there because the slant route is really hard to cover because the timing is so quick. But able to see it, diagnose it, and get to the football, that's why he's able to bat it away. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. Their big bodied receiver with touchdown number 23 here on the year. And the Browns add on to their lead. And the defensive there, that was a battle. He just made a really nice play. A really nice play, making sure his body position was correct. And how about the throw? Zipped it in there. And it results in the touchdown. The 25-yard line as this offense gets set to take over. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. And with this guy, I don't know that you're surprised when he has back-to-back -back games like this. He just keeps excelling. What I like about him is that every year, he doesn't settle for being one of the best in the game. He tries to make himself better. Almost like those great basketball players. I remember hearing about Kobe Bryant wanting to add something to his game every offseason. Magic Johnson, what do I need to work on to get better? Michael Jordan had that fadeaway before his career was over. Those are the best. Even though they're at the top of their game, they find ways to get better. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. 31 yards on the punt there. And the Bengals take possession. This 
offense will head back out there. Already an excellent field position thanks to the interception. And he'll give it here to his running back. And just a couple yards there down to the 17. Tough day, tough sledding right there. And it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. Five yards on the pickup. And just like that, it's third down. Okay, no score on that play. But this guy's been a touchdown machine all year long. You know they trust him with the football. And on the ground they go with the running back. And he'll get nothing out of that one. No gain on the play there. And it'll bring up fourth down. One quarter remains here as the regular season starts to wind down. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. It's the Browns football, and they've got the lead here as we start quarter number four. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And Coons connects on this one. It's good. And that will extend their lead even further. yard line as this offense gets set to take over. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And that one incomplete. Had some position but couldn't hold on, and it brings up fourth down. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. That one good for 12 yards. And they're able to convert here on fourth and inches. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That's going to leave them with just one remaining here in this fourth quarter. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Looking deep downfield. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, you've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play. And guess what? They took a shot. How are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. Well, they get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. That will be their third and final stoppage as they'll only have the two-minute warning now remaining. Back to throw here. Going up top. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down.
So the football will be at the 25-yard line as this offense gets set to take over. And again, this time to the tailback. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Time for a break. We'll come back and see how it all shakes out after this. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Just two yards to go here on second down for the offense. They'll set up a throw. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He's got time. He's going to look deep down the field. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. I know the initial focus was on how far that pass was downfield, but how about the coverage on the play? Able to stay with him, get his hands where the receiver's hands were going to try and catch the ball, tips it up in the air, and knocks it away. Back to throw now on second and 10. He's going to, and this is caught at the 20. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. And partner, sayonara to Randy Moss's 07 record. That is the 24th receiving touchdown this year for him. He's the new king. Well, always remember how Randy did it. Going deep, going over the top of people and catching those touchdown passes. But what we've witnessed here today, what we've witnessed throughout this season, great Looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. He's back to throw. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. He'll look to throw. He's going to let it fly. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. On every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet, they have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays. And you don't get many opportunities to dial them up. And they just did. And they drop it with a great chance to make a big play. That's going to hurt. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Back to throw. Looking left side, he's got it complete. They showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there, not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. Second down now after the pass completion. They'll look to throw. Now a desperation throw deep. And his ball is caught. It's a touchdown. And now in the final seconds, they're a PAT away from likely getting this thing to overtime. And while it appears the heavy lifting was accomplished by scoring the touchdown, they're still down one. That extra point is not a gimme. So here comes the kickoff now, all even here in this fourth quarter. Fairly short kick, taking it to 14 here. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30.
Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to take another shot here. And a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Second down now after the incompletion. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Finding time. He's going to let it go again. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. So we saw a lot of points. Overtime comes. The defenses, they clamp down. Rather amazing, isn't it? Because would you have even thought that we'd get to overtime after what we witnessed for four quarters? Not at all. And have zero points on either side? Not a chance, right? And somehow it happened. We always talk about making adjustments. Maybe both defenses took four full quarters in order to get an adjustment. Got one good period in for both defenses, and now they go home. You buying tonight? Ah, uh, I thought it was you. I did last week. I did the last two weeks. Oh, I was trying to go Dinner. for three. Dinner on you, my good Tried man. Tried to go for three. Nothing between these two teams for four quarters. Here we go to begin overtime. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. Except for their first drive here in overtime. And this is where the crowd can really become a factor. They've had to battle it all day, but I know what you're saying. In overtime, that gets double, doesn't it? At least, because now the crowd really wants to be involved and help their team. And that first drive can dictate the whole thing because they know if this team takes it downfield and scores a touchdown, it's game over. And it's been loud in here so far. And he'll give it here to his running back. Cuts left. Accelerating, and off he goes. And all the way down to the 17-yard line. A huge play there in overtime. 56 yards on the ground. And now a first down following that long gain. Now a first throw here in overtime. Now the pressure gets there, and he goes down just inside the 20 at the 19. And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all, because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. If you take a big sack, it could push you out of range, and that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. Charles on the slant. You always need good ball placement. They got it there. Brandon, the quarterback, put it in the exact perfect spot, right to the upfield shoulder of the receiver, and he used his body to keep the defender away. And he is in for the score. And it is absolute stunned silence here as they win it on the road in overtime. As the fans exit back out through the turnstiles, not happy looks on their faces. Feel like they probably let this one slip away at home in overtime. I would agree with that, and, and their unhappiness hurts the guys at the concession stands on the way out, right? <laughs> Not stopping to buy something for the kids. They just want to get home. But what a dramatic way to finish this bad boy off. I mean, this game was dramatic all the way through. That's why we got to overtime. And then to go ahead and finish it this way, the fans streaming out unhappy. But the team that came in here and won this one on the road, they sprinted to their locker room. And speaking of buying things, dinner on you tonight, Davis. I kind of figured that was coming. So for Cleveland, they'll wrap up the campaign an impressive 15-1. And, and they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for Cincinnati, they wanted desperately to finish at 500, but that won't happen as it'll be a 7-9 season in the end. And they'll get the extra week to think about this one as they return to action in two weeks' time.